Hi, uh, we're here with Mr. Tim to present some uh, modifications to his 7th grade pre-algebra lesson. So Mr. Tim, uh, first off, to prepare for the lesson, uh, you do have a note-taking guide that accompanies the textbook, if you could give that to A uh, for each lesson, maybe a day or, or even more before each lesson, that would give him a good chance to read through it and process things. Okay. Um, attempts should be made wherever possible to translate key vocabulary um, for the lesson into Japanese. Websites like Google Translate are not great for passages of texts, but for single words or even compound words, they're fairly accurate. Uh, I personally uh, recommend wordreference.com. Also, there is an app specifically for Japanese called Iniwa that you can find on the App Store for iPads, iPhones, and the like. Uh, it's a free app. Um, also, uh, in accordance with a lot of ESL methodology, the lesson should incorporate not only the pre-algebra content learning targets, but also a language learning target. Um, a good example for this lesson might be, I can identify the correct ratio in written form when it is spoken to me. Um, also, I noticed you have a smart board, mm -hmm. so if you could take screenshots of the board, or if A has a phone or some kind of camera to take a picture of it, um, that would help him to focus on what you're doing rather than writing things down. Um, although if he is fast enough at writing, that's okay. Um, if possible, to make examples and things more concrete, if you could find a video of an actual archer, for example, one, um, that would be great. You may even be able to find a video of someone practicing Kudo, which is Japanese archery. Mm -hmm. And this will help affirm Ace culture and make the example a little more concrete. Uh, also, you may, to help make things a little more concrete. Uh, you may utilize a quick image, image search to show pictures of the birds, for example, too, or really to show pictures for any word problem or example that you might have. Um, especially in example two, showing all the birds and showing repetitions of how you would determine aspect ratio could be good to ensure that A understands this uh, term. Um, also, be sure you display the problem uh, on the board as you or students read it aloud. Um, and also be sure that, uh, or consider uh, that in order to show how the problems are worked, consider putting together a PowerPoint step by step and letting it run through while students are doing their work. This provides visual reinforcement for uh, all the processes. Um, I know you mentioned that you let a couple of your English language learners work together and do keep using this cooperative learning. Pairs are great. Um, if you could work in even group work at some point, that would be very good. Um, also with any ESL, make sure you utilize frequent comprehension checks as formative assessments. Even just a thumbs up, thumbs down kind of thing is okay. And finally, especially when you're explaining terms and things, use what we call guarded speech. And guarded speech is a way to uh, make your speech more comprehensible for the English language learners. You might slow your rate of speech, um, emphasize word enunciation, simplify the vocab used in a lesson or in a problem, but not at the expense of content, of course. Um, use this vocabulary consistently with appropriate repetition. Utilize shorter, simpler sentences, and you could even use more pauses between your longer pauses between your phrases. So, sounds like you do most of these things. Well, that makes too. sense. Most yeah. of it does. Uh, now, sometimes I, I, they do have, he's on, I have what I call Khan Academy. I give him extra credit, and then we play a pun on words where we have a contest. Oh, very good. And the kids go online, and he goes on there, so those lessons can be translated into their own language. Great. So, if he's having a problem with proportions, he can go onto that page and look at it, and it puts it in his natural language. Uh, as far as the iPads, I, d I don't have one, so it's kind of hard for me. Uh, I do try to go online and look and try to use some Japanese words. Uh, as far as what I'm going to try to do with uh, making them feel welcome in the room, I used you know, the PBIS that we follow, be safe, be responsible, and be respectful. I had a Japanese kid, and his mother wrote that poster up for me. Very cool. Uh, you know, some of the things here, but I mean, one of the things I'm going to probably do is try to find a map. 
of Japan, and I'm going to make a scale ratio of that, and then I'm going to have them actually do figure out the distance from one city to another with the ruler, because they're not very familiar with the, the old English measurement with inches an eighth of an inch and sixteenth of an inch because they're so used to doing metrics and with the test that we have a lot of them are in the old English uh, I guess I could convert that to metrics where it would be easier to understand but you know we you know they, they still have to understand those concepts right. and uh, even the American kids have problems with rulers if you would look at the core content test that we have they actually have a ruler that they have to learn how to read Right. And they have to measure on that. So that's one of the concepts. And one of the weaknesses that we had problems with in our, in our testing system. So I have the kids, actually we spend probably a day or two just learning how to read a ruler and measure things. And then we go back and then I try to use it on a, a map ratio. I used to use a map of, uh, I believe it was Utah. Uh, but now, I, since this, maybe I'm going to see if I can hunt one down and go with a map of Japan and try to make them feel more welcome. Very cool. Uh, as far as the vocabulary words, I give them vocabulary words before we start at the end of the chapter. So on these chapters, these kids have these words already ahead of time, and then we review them as they come up in the section of the chapter. Um, you know, the, the translator is a perfect idea. I, I like that. Uh, what is it, Emoe or whatever you called it? I can't. Emiwa. Emiwa, whatever you mm -hmm. called it. Uh, I would like to have that, but you know, with the facility and, and what I have, I don't actually have a, an iPad that'll work that I can use in, in the classroom. Uh, I may use that at home okay. to, in my free time, uh, but uh, I think that's an excellent thing to okay. use in the future. Let's take a few moments to talk about WIDA, World Class Instructional Design and Assessment. All of the materials we'll be talking about are available at their website. WIDA creates a variety of materials useful for educators of English language learners. Some of those materials include screening and proficiency tests, an amplification of the 2012 TESOL English Language Development Standards, and the WIDA can-do descriptors. Two of WIDA's assessments are the WAPT, a screener that gives teachers an idea of students English language proficiency especially when they first arrive and the access test a detailed assessment of students English language proficiency in each of the domains of language unfortunately A does not currently have any access scores however he does have a WAPT score of 1 what this means is his English language proficiency is in the lowest level graded by the test. Using this information, we can now utilize the 2012 amplification of the ELD standards and the can-do descriptors to help write language objectives. So for example, if I look at the amplification of the ELD standards, if I go to grade 7, ELD standard 3, the language of mathematics, I would choose level 1, entering, because that suits A's level. If I were looking at the can-do descriptors, I would look at the grade level cluster for grades 6 through 8. And again, I might choose level 1 entering as a guide to help write language objectives. The great thing about the can-do descriptors is that they're broken up into each of the four language domains. So if I want to focus on listening one day, speaking one day, that's a very possible thing for me to do. So there's a lot of things I can think from this and try to use it in the classroom. Very good. All right. Thank you for letting me work with you. All right, man. Thank All you. Right. See Thank you. you.